All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another round of coffee and questions. What's today's topic? I want to talk about this titanium 45 plasma cutter. Now, Justin uh, came down. We decided we're going to play with it and we're going to have some fun with it because he actually has one. And something went wrong with his camera and so forth, but we did manage to get a lot of footage. And I wanted to talk to you, I mean, about this. And I mean, this is a nice plasma cutter. Now, the one that I had was a hypertherm. I'll leave you. hypertherm i'll leave you the links below but i had the hypertherm for quite a while i ended up selling it and getting most of my money back or they're close to it and i decided well i didn't need one for right now but when he told me he had this i thought i'm dying to try this out so he came down we hooked it up and we demoed it so i'm going to give you my overall thoughts i like it overall and i'll do questions and answers on this but for right now i'm going to change a picture i'm going to show you different pieces of footage from our day together, I mean actually using this. So give me just a sec and then I'll stop in between, make a couple of comments and we'll move over to questions and answers. But this is a nice little unit. All right, so in this first photograph you're gonna see, this is me beginning to use the torch and actually cutting. Now, how and how, how did we go about this? So what I did is I went on the computer, Googled you know templates or I put horse template or Route 66, you know, template, and it came back with some black and white pictures. I printed those out on my printer. I took them down to FedEx. FedEx blew them up to the size that I requested. They've got machines there to do that. I think it was $2 a piece, and they went ahead and they printed those out. Then I brought them home. I took a pair of scissors and, like, a, an X-Acto knife, and I cut out what you see here. I laid it on the piece of uh, sheet metal, and then I used white primer and I shot it and that created the pattern here that we use to begin to cut. Oh, here's a neat little fun fact. Dad just said that this was his grandpa's big old piece of heavy lead. <laughs> what do you suppose he used that for? I have no idea. Just a big round solid piece of lead maybe for shaping uh, metal? I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. I just have always used it. He was a mason -ter. He was a masoner too, right? Yeah, yeah. He was a masonry. Cool. Okay, folks, so what we have is you have the template laid out here. You can use little pieces of blue tape or whatever you want to hold the corner so it doesn't fly up on you when you're spraying that primer. So you go around it just like I did here with the white primer, and here you can see where I cut the inner part of the O out and I just put it in there just like this. These down here is at the little bridges. You spray that, I just let it sit for a while, no rush. Lift it off of here, take this off, and there you got the template. Now, so you don't screw yourself up, I mean, when you're doing this, here I've got the bridges, up here I didn't, and I realized, well, if you go and you cut this out, it's going to drop out. I'm not that you can't figure out a way to fix it, but it'll be a lot easier if we have these, we leave these little bridges in and just cut out the upper and the lower. We'll see what it looks like. We can always modify it. Look at it like a design opportunity. So, and we're going to do the same thing down here. And here's the outline of the sign. For the moment, what we're going to leave off is this big gray line, okay? That would be very time consuming to do. You would need, like I said, if you want it to look good, you're going to need to lay out a piece of angle iron and use a straight edge. That would create all these straight cuts, but a lot of these curves, you're going to have to freehand them and it's rough cutting and then you're going to have to go in you know with files grinders clean everything up and make it look nice but we'll do that at a later time if justin decides to do that for right now here we go let's get started cool. i'm gonna throw a little video clip down here before we go ahead and start but my dad actually has a really good tip for anyone using a welder or a plasma cutter that involves the ground clamp All right, so with everything in place and being moderately untangled, I want to start with the letters first. I think that's what I'm going to yep, do. I would. Or the numbers or whatever. Just keep in your mind where those little bridges are. Stay away from them. You're going to cut off just the white. Yep.
Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Look at that! There you go. So, what are the first few things that uh, I liked about this unit um, after using it? You saw just in the previous couple of clips that I put up there, you know, us using it. Well, you got that nice little adapter that goes from 110 to 220. I mean, that's nice. The cables and the air hose, they're well shielded. It's a good, uh, you know, thick gauge, I mean, for the grounding clamp cord. The aluminum clamp is nice. I mean, I didn't have any problems with that. It's decent quality. I mean, it's not the incredibly cheap one, and it's not the super high-end one, but it's very doable, very nice. I like the LED display on this. I like the knob on the front. I mean, and so this is really kind of a very simple unit to use once you had it set up correctly. And we'll go over some of my thoughts on that. But I do like the digital display. I mean, it's nice to be able to glance over at it. And for the price, this is a good cutter. I really believe that it is. Now we Now we did try when we were out there, I kept lowering the pressure. I wanted to see kind of what would happen and get a feel for the unit. If you lower the pressure too much, the unit just kind of shuts itself off because the unit recognizes you don't have enough PSI coming to it to power it. So what would I would tell you, I mean, for the initial settings, I mean, on this thing is I would set it at 95 PSI and keep it about 33 amps or less if you do the duty cycle will be a hundred percent anything else I mean you know you might have to shut it off let it rest a little bit if you set it like that though this thing is like uh, it's a beast I mean it's like a cutting tool on steroids a long time back I mean all I had was oxyacetylene and a cutting torch that's what I used but then you have the expense of filling you know those big H cylinders whereas with this you don't and it actually cuts faster, smoother, and cleaner than a cutting torch, or at least I feel that it does. Um, one of the questions on here where somebody had said you get a lot of slag with this. Well, yes and no. Yes, you will, but I mean, if you tweak the settings and play around with it, pretty soon you'll get a good, smooth, clean cut. Um, would I buy it? Yeah, I would. Um, Justin bought it. I'm glad he's got it. I could probably use it from time to time from him, but if I was going to go out and get another one, yes, I would buy this unit. Because if you compare that, look in the description below, click on Hypertherm, that's the one that I got. You can get this one at one quarter the cost. And after demoing this in you know, the video that you just saw, it does everything that the Hypertherm did. Now on mine, I have a dedicated air hose in the garage uh, that I only run, uh, let's say that I was using it for my spray guns and stuff because I don't want water contamination or anything in there. It goes through a filtering system. And I have disposables. I'll leave you the link below. I put a disposable on there. Now, one of the nice things about this, it has an integrated water strainer on the back of it. Let's see if I can show you a picture in a minute. But the cleaner that you can keep the air coming into it, you don't want moisture coming into this unit. So having that extra disposable filter is going to help you. Take a look over here to my right. You can see the tip. That's silver. That's like the standoff guard. And it actually helps to keep your distance from the tip to the material. Now, this is going to make your consumables last longer. You won't burn up the tips as fast. I found it really handy. I found it to be accurate. Well, the one thing that I would caution you about, make sure, uh, maybe you can even contact Harbor Freight. My one caution would be to make sure I could get replacement parts if I needed to. I'm sure that the consumables are available, but, you know, grounding clamp, that's easy to replace. But, I mean, if you had problems with the gun, or the hose or anything like that and you needed to get another one I would contact them just to make sure that there's parts availability somewhere that would be my only caution on this unit otherwise fantastic for the price I think um, I can give you a couple of tips on the success of this you have to have a good compressor 
and I would run it on 220. I wouldn't even use the 110. You have a good compressor, you run this on 220, I'm telling you, like I just said, it's a beast. It will cut like there's no tomorrow. It works really well. Um, any other tips I have? Uh, yeah, if it was me buying it, I would buy the extended warranty. Um, this is a pretty good size investment at $900. Uh, you know, whether you use coupons or whatever you use, it's still a pretty good size investment. I would get the extended warranty with it. It's a very easy unit, I mean, to set up and use. I enjoyed using it. Um, if I had my choice between this and the Hypertherm right now, I would go with this. Like I said, one quarter of the cost, it did everything that my other one did. It's a nice unit. This is a very basic overview, I understand. But you can see, you know, from the videoing that we did in the demo. And yeah, we're only using sheet metal. But I did put up a piece of, uh, it was almost quarter inch stock angle iron. And it cut through it with no problem. We were just playing around. But then we converted over to the sheet metal because we were actually going to do some fun projects. If you take a look at Justin's video, you'll see the Highway 66 sign up in his garage. He took it home. You can always clean up all of the edges, four and a half inch angle grinder, lap wheels, all of this stuff is available at Harbor Freight. I will also leave you links below. I buy benchmark abrasives. I find them to be better than most things that I've used and they've got a good price on them. You can use a Harbor Freight, you know, inexpensive hand files. You can use Dremel tools to get in to, you know, those little intricate areas and really clean them up and make them look good. You can also use a four and a half inch angle grinder flat disc, clean off the entire surface of the rust or leave the rust, shoot it with clear. You've got all kinds of options really when it comes to the finishing. It's a fun thing to have and it comes in really handy if you're gonna do any kind of a cutting at all. Like I said, if I was to buy it again, I would definitely get this one. I'm the home handyman. I hope you click subscribe, keep following me. I hope you folks enjoy these videos. Check out Justin Dow's channel. He's the one that has this. And he has also the, you know, the MIG welder, which we have done videos in the past. It's a nice MIG welder. Um, I've got the Miller, of course, the 211 auto set, but we have both tools now. So that's what makes everything nice. I mean, and we can keep demoing things and bring you folks, you know, the information. I hope you click subscribe. Keep following me. If you know something better or a better deal, drop it in the comment below. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video. You folks have a great day. Bye-bye.